years. And I remember uh, first going on tour with Roy Ayers back in 93, and I walked into Ronnie Scott's jazz club, which is like the Carnegie of Europe, if you know anything about Ronnie Scott. You walk into the place, and there's a big framed photograph printed up the, just about the same size as this one. It actually is the very same size. And it has the Harlem family, the first jazz family on it. And Ronnie Scott walked in, bless his soul, he's passed now. He walked up to me, he says, uh, welcome to the club and everything, very nice guy. He says, if you get mad, everybody on the photo, I'll give you a bag of champagne. <laughs> uh, I didn't know everybody on the photo. <laughs> he went down, well, how about that little kid right there? You know him? He said, if you know him, if you know just him, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I didn't know him either. But I made it a point to learn who most of the people were and uh, made a point to learn and remember what the photos stood for. Uh, history being made today was solely inspired by just the little stories in my life that have made it where I'm standing right here talking to you. One of those stories is a gentleman who's in the room right now who taught me in school. He used to walk in with his very sharp suit. He's, he's from down, he's, he's some, somewhere from the south, but he taught, you know, he taught around. But he came to Baltimore and he interjected the idea into high school programming for musicians and student, musical students to learn and academically, musically, on a musical level, take that level and start from So you, when you got to Morgan or you went to any college, you were already adapted to the first two years of credits that we needed for, for your credits to, to finish college. And that gentleman that's here today, he, he injected that to us to learn the scale, to learn the music, to learn the sight reading. And without him, I guess it would never inspire me to to go as far as I'm, as I'm going so far. Put your hands together, Mr. Thomas Delaney. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm not going to talk too much more because I think uh, <laughs> we want to get on and listen to Greg what he's got, you know, what he's going to do, and uh, and just thanks for spending some time with us today and uh, unleashing unleash this picture, unleashing this history. So when you see it, you take it, you put it in your house. Think to yourself, what will inspire you to do? Thank you. Uh, when you think of um, the arts in Baltimore, there are a lot of great people who make a lot of great things happen. Uh, one thing, um, no organization can operate without a wonderful board. And I want to recognize our board members from the UV Lake Center. Actually, please stand. of the help of WEAA Radio Morgan State University, they actually brought us together. And they said, let's call this project together, put a call out to the community. Yeah. So we put a call out to the community and the community and And when you have, um, when you're putting something like this together, you need people who are activists within that community. And one person is Cam A. Callaway Murphy, who's been extremely instrumental. When you see this building, She's one of the people who were actually raised money to have this building here, and she's been supporting it since she retired. Uh, she couldn't be with us today, but her son is going to um, come up with us to help us unveil Christopher Brooks. Unveil this wonderful piece. And, ready? You ready for this? Wipe your glasses on. It's a camera set, so this is a wonderful piece. This piece, everything was donated to services. Mr. Glenwood Jackson, um, uh, photographer. Uh, can you come up, please? Can we get a drum roll? And also, um, the framing of this piece was donated 
by Stephen Reichardt. I'm not sure if he's here at the moment. So when we put out a call for something like this, so many people answer and say, I'll be there in support. I'll be there in my services. Whatever I can do, I'll help. I'll shoot it. I'll frame it. Everything. Because we have to document our history if we're going to teach the youth. And before we un um, um, unveil this, um, this piece here will go to support the UB Blake Summer Program for um, our Jazz Studies Program. We have a program here at the center where youth come from all over the state of Maryland and some outside of Maryland to study jazz right here in this room. This is their actual classroom and performance space. And Mr. Craig Austin is a wonderful instructor for that. This past summer, yes, give me a minute. In the uh, summer of 2009, the state of Maryland announced that they could no longer support um, the UB Blake Cultural Arts Summer Program. So we said, so we'll move on. And we did. And we supported our own program and we maintained. We love those state funds. However, we were able to maintain our own program. And out of 15 gifted and talented sites in the state of Maryland, the UB Blake Center was the only site in the arts that remained within the program. So we're very proud of ourselves and our group. So a portion of the proceeds of this great piece will go to continue that program so we can continue to educate our youth. Um, we can maintain this art form of jazz here in Baltimore. And the students can say, yes, they cut their teeth right here at the UB Blake Center. So we, can we get a drummer for a drum roll, please? <laughs>